here we have a Dell Inspiron 15 3000 series and the actual one I'm using is a 3543 remember to put your laptop on something soft so you don't damage it or scratch it when you move it around and also remember to turn off your laptop I accidentally turned on my laptop when I pressed the button now we're going to flip to the back where we begin so first, if you haven't removed the battery, remember to remove your battery. As there's screws under it, there's two screws under it. Now we're going to remove the cover. There's one screw holding this cover down. This cover gives you access to your hard drive, wireless card, and RAM. So now you remove the screw, you drag it down a bit, it creates a gap and you lift it up. Just going to put it back for you to show you. As some people ask, you put it back, then you slide it back in. So here we have your hard drive, your wireless card, your RAM. There's only one RAM slot, so this laptop only has 8 gigs of RAM max. So to remove the hard drive, there's one screw here. You need to remove this one screw to remove your hard drive. After you remove the screw, you need to drag it forward or slide it. So I'm just using my palm as I need more grip. And there's this tag here, this black tag, to lift it up. Do not use the tag to pull it out, as you'll probably rip it, as it's actually quite hard. So here's the wireless card. There's one screw holding the wireless card down. <laughs> so after you remove the screw, the wireless card pops up. And you just drag it out. And remember to you remove your wireless cables. I'm just going to put it back as I don't need to remove it. Please don't do this. If you're planning to remove, disassemble your whole laptop, you have to remove your wireless card. Later on, you'll find out. I did not realize that until I um, removed the whole thing. So to remove your RAM, you just push the two sides and it pops up and just take it out. Like I said before, there's only one slot. So now, to remove your DVD drive, there's a screw here. After you remove the screw, just drag your DVD drive out and it comes out. Now we have to remove all the screws on the back. So I'm just going to point out all the screws to you. So if you don't if you want to skip this part and continue. It's just basically remove every screw on the back. Please note, not all the screws are the same. Most of the screws are the same. But this screw here, the one you see, I'm removing now, is a hinge screw. And it's longer than the rest. Same with the opposite side of it. It's also a hinge screw. Here just to show you the different types of screw. So this screw here, the bigger one, is the hinge screw, and the smaller one is the screw that you use for the rest. So now we need to flip the laptop over to remove the keyboard and remove a few screws under the keyboard. So 
So you're going to need your prying tool to remove the keyboard. So you need to pry it along the edge on the top. Well, there's actually gaps. There's five gaps. You just need to poke it in and it comes off. So once you create a gap, you just shove your fingers in it and it makes it a lot easier for you to remove it. So after you remove it, be careful, don't just rip it off as there's a cable attached to it. So you just have to remove all the cables attached. There's only two. This one here is the power button and this one here is your mouse pad. There's also three screws holding the cover down. So here's one, two and three. Now we removed all the screws, we're going to need our prying tool to remove the cover. So we need our prying tool to go around it. I'm just going to take the laptop off screen, it's a lot easier for me to do. Now that I finish, So here you go, the motherboard. So we need to remove the following screws. I'm pointing it to a mount now. There's around, there should be five screws in total. And you also have to remove the cables. So this cable I'm removing here is your power cable. This is your LCD cable. So this screw here, after you remove the screw, you need to remove, you need to push the board to the left. So just to show you here, as you see, push it left and right to detach it. Now that we removed all the screws, please be careful as um, as you removed everything on the bottom, the LCD screen gets heavier and makes it hard for it makes it tilt. And um, here you go is where I forgot the wireless card on the back. Just have to remove it off screen to remove it. So here you go, here's the wireless card. I apologize for the LCD screen, I have to tilt it slightly up as it tilts the whole thing.
So after you remove the uh, wireless card, it just comes off pretty easy and straightforward. So here we have the motherboard. Here's your fan, your graphic card, your CPU, and here's the BIOS battery. This is your battery extension. So now we're going to remove the heatsink. So I'm just going to point you out the screws. There's five screws in total. You can remove the screws in any order. Also remember to unplug your fan cable. When you remove your heatsink, you need to reapply thermal paste and remove the old, old one. Also, when you remove the screws, you can remove it in any order, but when you put back the screws, you have to put it back in order it's so you can spread out the thermal paste evenly. There's numbers next to the screw hole telling you which number, uh, which screw you have to screw in first. And don't be cheap on your thermal paste. Thermal paste is really important and it doesn't cost much. It costs basically $10 per tube and that one tube can basically use 15 times. So here we go. Here's our heating. I removed all the screws. So here's the thermal paste we have to clean off. Don't remove these pink things. They're thermal pads. They're to cool down your RAM for your graphic card. So I'm just going to get my towel. Okay. You also need to clean off these thermal paste too on the CPU and the graphic card. So I'm just going to use my towel to clean off the thermal paste. You don't need any special liquids or alcohol solutions, you just need a towel or a paper towel. And you just need to rub it until it comes off clean. You don't have to be 100% clean, but just as clean as you can be is good enough. I'm just going to remove the heat off screen as it's easier for me to clean. So here we go, it's all clean. So now I'm just going to show you the numbers next to the screw hole. Hope you can see it. Just let me get the camera to focus. So here's number one, number two. Three, four, and five. So now we're going to replace the thermal paste. So here I'm using Arctic Silver 5, like I said before, and it costs $10 per tube, and you can use it 15 times. So what we're going to do is we're going to put half a rice grain size of thermal paste on each chip. The graphic card has one. We're going to put it in the center. The CPU has two shiny parts. So we're going to put half a rice grain on each one in the center and not spread it out. We're going to put the heat sink on it. It will spread out automatically. And like I said before, do not be cheap on thermal paste. And it's really important. So the idea is to place your heat sink over the top don't press it down and when you screw it in that's when it presses down automatically So that's about it. Remember to place back your power cable for your fan. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. This disassembly is relatively easy as most of the screws are the same. 
for a note, I think most people would like to know that the motherboard for this laptop and the motherboard for Dell Inspiron 17 5000 series is actually the same motherboard. So yeah, so you can switch it vice versa and that's it. Thanks for watching.